How's that sound? That's awesome. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I'm a big, if, if you, once you get to know me a little bit more, I'm a big advocate for data and matrices and going back and being able to analyze things deeper and deeper. And you'll find out why as we work through the presentation a little bit more. But um, so today's topic is TikTok and Instagram Reels for Business. Um, this one gets me really, really excited because up until actually studying for this presentation um, about a month ago when Linda had presented it to me, um, I had not really had many clients asking me about TikTok. Since then, I've had five people reach out to me about TikTok. Um, so I've been deep diving and learning as much as I can. And it's been amazing to learn how powerful of a tool TikTok is. And you'll realize that through this presentation, through this lunch and learn, I'll be pro I'll be focusing majority of my attention and energy on TikTok. And you'll definitely understand why. But so this lunch and learn, it may it's scheduled for an hour. It may or may not take up to an hour. Um, it really depends on the amount of engagement we get. Um, and then I'm leaving a little bit of time at the end for a Q&A. So um, if you're having any hard time hearing me or anything, or you need me to slow down, again, use that chat box. I would like as much engagement as possible. Um, so we've already got started. I had here that we were going to wait for a few more people. But, um, but <clears throat> to get this started, um, I see there's quite a few people in here. It looks like there's about eight. No, there's more than eight. Okay, it's about 15. So if you don't mind, would you let me know who you are, what you do, and your favorite hobby in the chat box? And I know that's going to blow up the chat box, but that's exactly what I'm wanting here. Okay. And while you guys type, one of my biggest fears is public speaking. And I'm gradually overcoming that. Um, I had a speaking engagement last month in front of an audience of about 35, and it went pretty great. Um, today, we got about 14, 15 in here. So I'm excited about this as well. But I'm constantly overcoming and working to overcome my fears. So if you hear me say, um, or if you hear me clear my throat really, really hard, type a um in the chat box. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So we got John, general manager at Lakeview Lake and Light and Power. Favorite hobby is traveling. Yes, sir. What's your favorite place, John? Anywhere where there's a beach and sunlight. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Do you surf or are you just like getting a nice tan? I like to snorkel. I like to swim. I like to just go out in the water and float too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. Stacy from Ponders and your hobbies are farm life. Awesome. So <laughs> you bring me to a great point. Um, if you hear any clucking or a rooster being very loud, <laughs> let me know. My neighbor just got a rooster three days ago and I'm hoping it, the audio doesn't pick that up. But <laughs> if we hear a rooster, definitely let me know. But awesome, Stacy. Miss Sue, Miss Sue, I actually have one of your pins here. Yay! <laughs> oh my! <laughs> I don't think that's it's yours. A classic, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's awesome. Only special people get those, you know. <laughs> well, thank you. I feel I feel special. <laughs> Tacoma Trophy. Don't have much time for hobbies. I watch TV, and I'm a Mariners fan. Okay, go Mariners. And Tacoma Trophy, uh, if you don't mind. Um, Judy, you mind elaborating on that a little bit? Or do you kind of, do you make trophies? Do you um, kind of, what's that niche there? I'm not familiar. We do all varieties of trophies, awards, plaques, uh, do a significant amount of business with the military. Okay. Um, everything from your kids' soccer trophies to corporate and, and military awards. Okay. Great. Great. Well, glad to have you on here today. Awesome. Shayla, I'm the owner of Sunny Moments Yard Cards. Hobby reading. I love it. Catherine Jenkins, GM at Best Western Lakewood. I think I met somebody else from Best Western um, from the DuPont location. But awesome. Glad to have you yeah. on here as well. You met Shell. Um, okay. At, yeah. VP of, VP of Marketing, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. Shell and Burns. Hi, Catherine. Welcome. 
same day. Personally. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you all communicating in that uh, and participating in that uh, that chat box. And like I said, I would like to keep those chats kind of going as much as possible because the more engagement that you guys provide, the more we can make sure you're learning today and the more you're actually benefiting from this, this lunch and learn from today. So who I am, I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, Linda, do you mind opening up screen share? I am so sorry. Yes, of no course. Worries. We should be good to go. Awesome. All righty, so make sure you're on the right one here. Okay, are you able to see my presentation here? Yes. Does it say get to action now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Awesome, awesome. Let me bring that up all the way. All righty. So a little bit about myself. So I'm the co-founder and CEO of Iceberg Ads. We've been in business for about three years. <clears throat> we've been Lakewood Chamber, as Linda had stated, that we've been Lakewood Chamber members for a little over two months. Um, and it's been a great experience. Um, since joining Lakewood Chamber, our business has actually taken off. And it's just, it was amazing to see how the snowball effect happened of joining Lakewood Chamber and then the, the connections from Lakewood Chamber just connecting me and connecting me and connecting me. And now we're at a point to where our business is almost at max capacity. And it's an amazing problem, or it's not amazing, it's not a problem. It's an amazing situation to be in um, that we scaled that fast. And I, I honestly, Linda, Sue, and Scott, I honestly think back to that initial meeting at Hong's restaurant when I first met you guys. And then literally it's just been nonstop since there. So um, it's been amazing. Um, Iceberg ads, we specialize in social media marketing ads for Instagram and for Facebook. Initially, our goal was to start in 2023 on TikTok. But as we started preparing for this, this lunch and learn, we started to realize how big of an influence and how powerful TikTok really was. Um, we had had blinders on for too long, thinking that Facebook was still the leader, that Instagram was still the leader. But the more and more that we dug in and the more we started citing with our friends that are in the influence space as well, influencer space as well, we started to truly realize that TikTok has some viral traction and they're doing things with organic traffic that other brand or other platforms just have not caught up to yet. Um, so a little bit about myself um, before I dive into Iceberg as a little bit deeper. Um, I'm a father. Uh, my little kid, he turns four years old in about four days. That's us in the airport. We love to travel as well, John. Um, he was riding in style right there with his feet kicked up. Um, this right here is me um, on graduation day, uh, or excuse me, the week before graduation day. We took pictures early. But um, but I got an electrical engineer degree from Rose Tolman Institute of Technology, class of 2016. And there's my little guy again. So um, next slide here. So um, while I was in, in college, I played football, um, love football. I'm very active. I try to stay active and live a healthy lifestyle. I love boxing, love mixed martial arts, Muay Thai. Um, I love skating with my family as well. And then <clears throat> right there underneath the skating picture, you have um, a podcast that we actually host. So I have an e-commerce brand and we, we have a podcast that we do once a month that is focused on mental health and the effects of mental health um, uh, for men. So with our brand, or excuse me, um, a little bit about myself, a little bit more. So once I graduated from college with my electrical engineer degree, I realized very, very quickly that I was okay at electrical engineering, but that was not my passion. I was good at the work and decent at the work, but the energy that was put into the actual work was so draining that I just couldn't imagine doing that for the rest of my life. Um, so we had a career fairs and at the career fairs, jobs would come in and recruit us newly, new about to be newly grads. And I had an opportunity to speak with Textron Tools and Tests. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Textron Tools and Tests. Textron has a lot of sister companies under its umbrella. Um, it's got Bell Helicopters, which does uh, the helicopters for the military. They have EasyGo, 
which is the sponsor for um, or the company that owns golf carts and they produce golf carts, manufacture golf carts in um, side by sides. Um, you'll see them there. But then the division I worked on under was the tools and test division. Um, so in that position, it was a lot of drinking from the fire hose. But it was amazing because when I went initially into that position, they put me into a marketing position. And that's where I kind of really realized that I had a passion for helping people get the aesthetics that they were wanting to get, but then also really helping be that salesperson on the wall that nobody actually has to have the manpower out there representing the business. Um, the fact that you can have a nice display and it can still create sales and generate leads for your business, whether you're there or not. Um, understanding that power was very, very amazing. And then once I transitioned into my next role with Textron Tools and Tests, territory manager, I was responsible for 198 accounts over Montana, Idaho, and Washington. So I don't know that I mentioned, but I was, I'm initially originally from Indiana, born and raised in Indiana. And I came out here and I got to see beautiful mountain country. And it was amazing because I got to see um, all types of mountains, the Cascades, um, got to travel down to California as well. And it was, for a couple engagements as well. And it was just really, really nice to be able to see the Pacific Northwest from a, a aspect that I had never even imagined. So um, as you can tell, I'm not going anywhere. I love it out here. This is a beautiful country. Um, you guys' mountains are amazing. Indiana is way too flat. You're not missing anything there. But, um, but so for my role within the sales, um, within my outside sales roles, I was responsible for taking other outside sales people out on joint sales calls, educating the inside sales teams, the branch managers and the and the um, excuse me, the branch managers, the presidents, the CEOs on what exactly was selling with our products and what they needed to bring in for inventory and what they needed to get out of their inventory. So in all of that, I got a real good understanding of how people were utilizing social media or media in general to increase their bottom line, their, their dollars coming in on their bottom line. And I realized that there were a lot of businesses that were in the industry that I was in that weren't even thinking about social media. And that's where we kind of came up with the idea, my spouse and I, that we wanted to go and start helping people with marketing because there was a need to get your business out there, to get, to utilize and truly capitalize on social media and be able to use the different analytics tools to be able to develop the matrix to see exactly where your sales can improve just by having a presence on social media. Um, so that, that was the birth of Iceberg Ads in 2019. Um, around that time, I had transitioned to a new role, to a more local role because we had just had our kid. And um, after having some health issues, they let me go. And in 2019, we decided to go all in. So, um, so since then, it's been no turning back from there. And it's just been amazing to be a part of it. But initially, for the first two years, we only helped out friends and family. And then we transitioned to really, really helping out other business and branching out um, to other businesses and helping them understand how to get to improve their bottom line. So an example here is Wendy from Hong's Restaurant. Wendy I had randomly ran into her going into their restaurant one time and I was just intrigued by the spaces she had. And Wendy, I don't know if you've seen her, but she's also a Lakewood chamber member, but, um, Wendy, we, had, I went into the establishment and I said, Wendy, um, this place is beautiful. Um, why is it empty? And her issue, she kind of disclosed to me is, well, with people being so comfortable staying home with COVID, they didn't want to go and branch out and start going back into the businesses and start driving that, that dine-in business up like it was before. And excuse me, they, they had actually opened days before COVID mandate, the statewide mandate um, to shut down for a while. So, um, so yeah, so they were in an unfortunate position. So they never actually got to develop that dine-in traffic, but their online sales, their third-party sales from Uber and DoorDash were amazing. Uber Eats and DoorDash, excuse me. So, our whole goal with Hong's and objective with Hong's is to start bringing that traffic from third party into the dining traffic. And why that was such a big incentive is because those third party delivery services 
take a pretty big chunk. And when I say pretty big chunk, I'm talking double digit percentages per delivery. Um, and if we were able to convert those, those clients, those customers from the third party service to ordering directly from either Hongs or coming in and dining in, that money goes directly to the bottom line. So why that's so powerful. So, um, so excuse me, that's so powerful because it literally is just being consistent on social media and then converting that traffic to where it matters. Um, using those leads, developing those leads and converting them to where they matter. So a couple examples that I would like to highlight of some good posts that got us good traction and some decent leads are the one here on the left where she's making one of her uh, Vietnamese drinks. Uh, it's, it's like a dessert. It's pretty amazing. It's got beans on the bottom um, and some, uh, it's like a custard, I believe. Um, and then like jello that's all mixed up. It's pretty amazing. But we did that post and we created that content and was able to get nearly 400 likes with that post. On this next post here, you see that we were able to get nearly 13,000 views on this one post alone. And my slides are still showing up for everyone, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so, and then this next post here where their salt and pepper wings where we're promoting those you can see this post also a separate post from the others also got nearly 400 views or excuse me 400 likes <clears throat> another post that we did featuring their salt and pepper wings because we realized that that first post was starting to get so much traction they were like hey let's repeat this content and dive in deeper to be able to see what more engagement we can get as well so we were able to get 45,000 views on this video and nearly that same video, if you look over here to the top right, on the slide on the right, we were get, able to get nearly 2,700 likes on that one post. Um, so that's very, very powerful when you're talking about social proof and it, overall exposure and reach. And one huge thing that I wanna note is everyone that we targeted with those 45,000 views Though they weren't nationwide, it was specific to the Lakewood area to a radius around the Hong's restaurant restaurant. So I hope your wheels are spinning hearing that, just thinking how that can apply to your business or how you can make that a reality for yourself, because it's definitely possible. So moving on to the next slide, Lakewood Chamber, definitely had to throw you in here there, but um, but Lakewood Lemonade Day. Um Linda brought us on for that project and it was, I was so excited to be a part of it because we, um, we're all Lakewood members, so Lakewood Chamber members, so we're all familiar with Lakewood Lemonade Day, but just what it stands for and me, myself, having a four-year-old that was very, very passionate about making money and he sees his mom and dad owning their own businesses, it was very, very powerful to be a part of this project, but to be able to get the project, um, it was kind of like a rushed rush deal that we did but we had three weeks to the deadline um, to start getting the promotions out and start getting some traction with this post the one on the left here we were able to get seventy three thousand people reached so the law of averages oh, from those excuse me oh <laughs> yep so <laughs> so yeah so we were able to get seventy three thousand people reached and from there we were able, the law of averages, I mean, every step in the process, you're going to get a little bit less people engaging with the content, but we were able to get about a thousand people to actually engage with the content. So what does engagement mean? Engagement means either liking, loving, we see there's 52 likes and loves there. Um, commenting is part of engagements as well. That's 17 there, 25 shares. Um, that's part of engagements, but people actually watching the video <clears throat> for an extended amount of time, that also counts in its as an engagement. So just imagine if your business was able to get those type of same results for your business or able to drive that much, attract, that much traffic or awareness for your business. It's a very powerful tool, ads are. Um, moving to the next slide here, <clears throat> again, another post for Lakewood Lemonade Day. We were able to reach 22,000 people with this post with 1,500 engagements. And if you can see below underneath that engagement section, there were 380 people that clicked the link that we had designed to go to lakewood.org uh, slash lakewood or excuse me lemonade day.org slash lakewood to go and 
start continuing the process to actually get their booth registered and become a part of the Lakewood Lemonade Day. So <clears throat> unfortunately for this campaign, we didn't get the results that we want to, and I'm just being completely transparent with you. Um, we end up getting about six booths that actually came that we can we can realistically say that they possibly came from marketing. Um, there was no way to really confirm. We didn't reach out to people and say, how did you hear about it? Um, but uh, that will be something we do in the future for sure. But um, but again, with the law of averages, each step you get more drop off. But if we were able to run this campaign longer in the future, I believe we would have had way more than just six booths registered. To get 380 people to go to your link and actually look to go in the next process, um, that lets you know that there are a lot of people that are interested in what's being offered. And if and with our marketing and with our ads, we're able to retarget those same audiences either by via email or excuse me, email or either through ad campaigns again, asking for specific action actions. Hey, send a message or hey, call this number here. Um, do this call to action to progress on to the next step. If we were to repeat more of those campaigns on top of the 380 people that actually took that further step, those are the niche people. Those are the, the what, we, what we like to refer to them in, in marketing as is the raving fans that truly were passionate about what was offered. They, they saw the other videos, they saw this post here, they engaged with it and they took that next step. So those would be the ones we would retarget. And that's applicable for any business. Um, a couple of the, the, as I finish up the highlights here, a couple of the other businesses that we're working with, um, I'm working with some realtors that with John L. Scott, um, working with the team of realtors down in Olympia um, with John L. Scott as well. Benny Ray Consulting, we're actually doing her full branding and that should be released here soon with her website, her um, brochures, ad management, all of that. And uh, we're pretty excited about that because Benny Ray, she's also a Lakewood Chamber member. And she's really, really excited about getting that out there. Crab Kings Tacoma is someone we worked with as well. Notre Dog Academy is a, a couple other big people. But the reason for the talk today, the reason for the presentation today, the big question, and no, it's not, am I wearing pants on this Zoom call or not? Um, <laughs> it is, the big question is, what is TikTok? What does TikTok stand for? What is it? What's the story behind it? Um, so a quick preframe before I dive into this, oh, excuse me, never mind. I already said that. Um, so yeah, so the big question, what is TikTok? So majority of my time, like I stated earlier, will be on TikTok and you're about to find out why. Um, TikTok, <clears throat> majority of its principles are directly applicable to every other platform that exists. So that includes Instagram Reels, that includes Facebook, that includes YouTube Shorts, that includes idea pins on Pinterest. That includes LinkedIn. LinkedIn's actually working on a beta version of something similar to TikTok as well, but it's not fully uh, uh, fine-tuned yet, but it's coming. Um, but TikTok, what it is, is it's a short-form video sharing platform. Typically, on TikTok, you see videos that are shorter than 15 seconds. <clears throat> For most 90% of the viral content, they're typically 60 seconds or less. There are accounts that now have been opened up to be able to offer uh, three minute long videos. And then TikTok recently, here recently, even opened up to allow 10 minute long videos on the platform. Um, I don't necessarily think that the 10 minute longs is going to be their sweet spot. 10 minute long videos are going to be their sweet spot. Um, that's more YouTube's wheelhouse. Um, Facebook has a good presence with longer videos as well. But, um, but TikTok's sweet spot is the minute videos that are in shorter. Um, typically, if you figure out the framework, and I'll share a little bit as we work through this presentation, but if you figure out the framework, it's pretty easy to go viral. Um, going viral by accident, especially going viral by accident multiple times, is very, very hard to make repeatable. But once you figure out the secret sauce and you actually work at it, it's very, very possible. So for the average business owner, it's possible for you to start making your business get more reach organically through TikTok by just creating content and consistently putting it out there. So TikTok. So now Instagram Reels really fast. What is Instagram Reels? Instagram Reels is also a short form video sharing platform. What's different between the two? 
um, excuse me, what's the same between the two, if you look at them, they almost look identical. The features are very, very similar. Um, Instagram actually copied many of the features from TikTok. Um, and you can go research that even further. But it, it, if you're on Instagram, or if you're on Facebook, you'll often see many posts that actually have the TikTok watermark floating inside the the actual post. And I don't know how many of you've actually seen that. If you've seen that, throw a little throw a chat in the chat box. Well, we got 46 chats. I didn't even know. Awesome. Um, I said that many, I said that many ums. No. <laughs> No, <laughs> I refrain. I, I thought every time you say um, we should hit the heart sign. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's good to know. I didn't even I thought I was doing good. Thank you, Sue, for keeping me accountable. Awesome. <laughs> wow. OK, so. um, So, yes. So. The. The features wise, they look exactly the same. But the big difference between the two is TikTok had developed and, in, and created a major, mega major culture around their platform. That's the biggest difference there. So excuse me, hold on. So let me go ahead and stop sharing screen here. I don't need the, need the presentation for now. So <clears throat> why that's so, why that's such a big deal? Um, I'm gonna give you a, a quick little history lesson on why that's a big deal. Um, but for, before I go into that, I would like to know who on here actually uses social media and do you use it for business or for personal? Let me know in the chat box, please. <laughs> I'm scrolling through all the ums. <laughs> I'll be Here's my turn. Down down oh, so Tammy <laughs> does both. John does both. Awesome. Linda, both. Linda, you inspire me so much. You're just so free on with your content. I love it. Just it, it literally, I love it. But the rest of you, I'll definitely have to look into a little bit more. Ponders does. We use for business and personal. Awesome. Use social media. Ponders, Ponders does a great job. You need to, you need to go and like their page. We'll do. We'll do. We'll do. Educational and fun and fun. And that's the most important part, right? It engages you. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. So how many of you are actually on TikTok? Goose egg. Just started TikTok. Awesome. Not me. Both. No TikTok. Don't use it much. Well, well John, Stacey, I'm, I'm, Stacey said that they are. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Oh, so awesome. is John. Awesome. And then John, yeah, you don't use it much, but I hope after today you change your mind for sure. My son, well, you can't have a <laughs> Don't listen to him, Tammy. <laughs> I'm too to show my face on camera. Um, Janelle, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I challenge you to overcome that fear. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, just a quick little story. Um, one of my mentors told me this story and it resonated so deep. Um, and I'm kind of taking a tangent, but we'll come back in a second. But um, it resonated so deep. He asked me, he said, um, what's holding your business back? And I'm just like, I don't know, it's just, it's myself, lack of clarity. I don't I don't know. And he was just like, well, what's preventing you from taking that next step? And he gave me an analogy. He said, Do you know, the game of baseball. And I'm like, yeah, who doesn't? We live in America. Um, and he's just like, OK, the game of baseball, you got four bases home plate, first base, second base, third base, home. The objective is to get to first base and then make it all the way home. The person who's at bat behind you cannot progress to the next base unless you actually move and progress towards your next base as well. So he was like, imagine that you currently are at first base and all your goals and aspirations for your business are at second base. <clears throat> You sitting at first, your kids, your families, your coworkers, your colleagues are all at home plate and they can't even play the game until you take that first step and progress to the next base. Something about hearing that that day, I couldn't go to sleep that night. Um, it just bothered me because it's like, man, 
what have I been doing that's one foot in, one foot out that I need to adjust to make sure that my people are set up, my team is set up for the best position. And it really made me question my values. It made me question my principles. And it really made me question, why am I, why am I dragging my feet? If I'm all in, let's go all in. So Janelle, I challenge you because I promise you that you, your lack of action, and I don't want to attack you. I promise don't, <laughs> I just want to be blunt here because I really want you to understand that you could be holding someone back and you don't even realize, or you overcoming that fear on that platform could be inspiration for somebody else who is doing it stuck in that exact same position. Just going on there and saying, Hey, I'm nervous. Me today showing up today. Hey, I'm nervous with this presentation, but I'm going to do it anyways, because I know I'm going to fail and fail fast. And I'm going to figure this, this I'm a master of this in some type of way. So I challenge you, Janelle, I'm going to be, I'm going to be on you. I'm going to make sure I get your name. Um, I said it a whole bunch of times, so I play this back on the recording. I'm coming for you, and I hope that you are inspired enough by today to be able to take action and have enough tools once we get done today to be able to take that action and feel comfortable to take that action. And if you ever feel like you need a little bit more advice, reach out to me, DM me, um, Paris Gray on Facebook, Iceberg Ads. You can hit me up there, um, but I would love to be able to help you on that for sure. So just keep keep pushing, and I, I challenge you because I'm coming for you for sure. I promise. I want you to succeed and it's all, all good heart from here. But, um, so yeah, so a little history lesson. So TikTok, <clears throat> when it first came on the scene, everybody made fun of TikTok, um, because they had never seen short form video actually succeed. Why I say that tick, excuse me, Vine, if you all remember Vine, Vine was also a short form video sharing platform. It was found or excuse me, initially released in 2020 and in 2016, they decided that they were going to no longer accept new accounts. And by the end of that year, they had actually stopped allowing people to load up any pictures or videos total, excuse me. And they archived all of the videos on Vine. Around that same time is when TikTok came on the scene and its owner ByteDance really started putting a mass marketing into getting that market share that Vine had essentially let go. So Vine had about 200 million users on its platform when it actually went extinct. TikTok was moving heavily to get that audience. When it was doing that, it reached out to Facebook and Instagram to run ads on their platform. And Facebook and Instagram let TikTok as a competitor run ads on their platform because they did not believe that it was going to be successful. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> so <clears throat> moving on, even when they started getting more engagement and people started really realizing TikTok is starting to get a following, nobody took them serious. Tammy, I, I think you'd put in the comments here as well. It's for the kids. It's for the teens. It's not for business. Nobody wanted to believe that TikTok was here to stay. Fast forward. <clears throat> now everybody, or excuse me, fast forward to 2020 pandemic hits. TikTok already had a pre-pandemic audience. 2020, everybody got super, super bored. You had watched too many Netflix. You watch every single series that you had, you had at home. Um, and it was just, it was getting, you, people were going stir crazy. And TikTok's culture was born. And that's when it truly went viral. So let me get to my slides again to kind of illustrate exactly what I'm meaning here. Share screen. I don't know if you can hear my neighbor's chicken. <laughs> Can you, can you hear them? No. It's so annoying. No. Awesome. Just messing All right. with you. <laughs> All righty. So to illustrate, my slides are back up, or are you seeing the other screen? Yes. Okay, awesome. So <clears throat> the approach outsider looking in, when you look at and do the research for Facebook and Instagram, you get this, this graph here. You got on your X axis on the bottom, you have time. On your Y axis, you have reach. 
Well, when Facebook and Instagram first launched, they allowed you to get as much organic reach as you wanted. And it was, hey, Scout. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Sorry. <laughs> you're all good. I'm going to mute myself here. All good. I love that puppy. Um, but they allowed you to get massive, massive, massive organic reach on both platforms. And what their whole marketing strategy was, was to get you hooked. And then gradually over time, start decreasing that organic reach that you were able to get to force you to start doing what this red line is doing, start increasing your pay on ads to get that reach. <clears throat> I don't knock the model because it's brilliant. Get people hooked, make your platform the go-to platform. It's even to the point now where Facebook, they have it integrated with so many other platforms that when you go to create an account with another platform, you can just sign into your Facebook account instead of actually having to create a new password and remember a whole new password and log in, et cetera, et cetera. So they've made, they position themselves very, very well. Well, when 2020 happened, everyone went stir crazy. Because once 2020 hit, that model that they were going for, the paid reach and make their money back on the back end, give it, give everything free on the front end and make everything back on the back end got completely disrupted when TikTok came on the scene. Because when TikTok came on the scene, it started developing this culture. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that board in the house and I'm in the house board, board in the house and I'm in the house board bored in the house and I'm in the house bored and I'm bored and I'm bored and it was just like it, stuff was just fun and quirky and as Linda said in in, in the the bio for this uh, uh some of the stuff is just plain odd it just doesn't make sense but what they did is they developed this culture and when you understand that in real life culture context matters when you start looking at platforms as well the ones that are able to cultivate that culture and keep that culture alive and thriving to where people are literally, when you post, it's almost cryptic because there's so many jokes inside jokes, inside jokes, inside jokes. And the more time you spend on the platform, the more you start to understand you're having these little funny moments with all your followers because all of these layered jokes that are presented and are offered in the actual platform. But if you were to see that same post on Facebook, that context may not make sense because you haven't spent enough time on Facebook or excuse me, on TikTok. Um, it, yesterday was a bones day is another big thing. Uh, I bet nobody here even knows what that is. And it, it's, it's a dog that helps people understand the horse, their horoscope for the day. And they use bones to kind of dictate that. And it's just something funny, but it's part of the culture. And the more you understand that culture, the more, the culture embraces you on TikTok and really, really helps you get to that, um, that viral status. Um, so <clears throat> why is TikTok the disruptor and the trendsetter is because Facebook cannot repeat that culture. Even if they try, they cannot. Instagram is trying, trying, trying with their Instagram reels, but they're still not able to create that culture. Idea pins with Pinterest. Uh, YouTube shorts with YouTube. It's just, it's not happening. And what's amazing is with TikTok, they're still in that beginning phase that we see here on the green graph where Facebook and Instagram was offering all that organic reach for free. That's where TikTok is at right now. So when I said earlier, we didn't plan on doing TikTok until 2023, but preparing for this presentation and doing the research, I started to realize that we need to double down on TikTok because it's a very, very pivotal moment. And there's a small window of how long, because we don't know when they're going to do the move that Facebook and Instagram did and actually start making you pay for ads because they do have an ad platform. Sparks, Spark ads is um, how you can promote your ads on, on TikTok. But, um, but we don't know how long this free organic traffic is going to be. So that's why I said, John, this is the perfect time to start getting that organic reach and start putting stuff out there more consistently on TikTok and prioritize it over every other platform at this moment because of how powerful it is and how easy it is to get that organic reach. So um, we are about 15 minutes. Okay, awesome. So 
do you believe TikTok, or excuse me, do you believe just from the presentation that I've said so far, and let me know in the chats that TikTok is for your business? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes. So awesome. So now I really want to dive into some tips. And I'm going to move through these tips kind of fast. Um, if you're taking notes, definitely take notes on these. Um, there's 10 tips here. And then I want to finish off and give some time for a Q&A at the end. But, um, but it, I just hope you really can see the value that TikTok provides and how powerful it is and how you can leverage all the content that you put on TikTok on every other platform because TikTok is the trendsetter right now. So tips, I'll move into that. And like I said, I'll move kind of fast. If I need to slow down, definitely let me know. Uh, Linda, you put a question mark. Don't want to, but I guess. Oh, <laughs> was that for Leanna? <laughs> no, um, I, I, I haven't viewed enough um, uh, corporate-based uh, TikTok type of, of activity to figure out where where we could fit in, where we could where we could make an impact. Okay, that and that's a great concern. And um, <clears throat> I think I can kind of answer two. Uh, I don't want to say kill two birds with one stone, but answer two questions at once because John is saying speak to the perception of risk, um, and that's kind of kind of what's going on here as well. Is you want to make sure that it makes sense for you mm -hmm. um, overall and. I will say that from what everything that I've seen, it makes sense for every industry. Um, just because you're able to create relational connections on TikTok, it, it, it moves away from, so like when you're running ads, you're typically targeting a specific, targeting a specific market and you're niching down essentially to people in the area, people that have the same interest to whatever your business is, et cetera, et cetera. Well, a question I get asked often, um, especially when it comes to TikTok, is do I need to niche down more or do I need to have multiple TikTok accounts? Or can I just have one single TikTok account and have everything about me in that TikTok account? Well, if you have... A TikTok, oh, excuse me, to answer that question, you only need one account. And there is an option to either create a creator, and sometimes you'll go into uh, TikTok, excuse me, sometimes you'll go into TikTok and it'll say creator or personal. They're doing A B testing, they're just playing with the name to see which one sticks the best. But basically, it's a personal account or a business account. My advice is keep the personal account in every, and, and when I say my advice, I don't just, I'm not just coming up with these opinions. I've done a whole bunch of research. I have lots of friends that are also in the TikTok space. I have a friend that has been my personal trainer for Muay Thai for two years. He has 141,000 followers um, and he has a great, great influence. So I'm getting these tips from people firsthand, but they say, create your personal account and integrate everything business related into that. Because what that does is makes you multi-layered. And I wish I would have made this graph um, so I can use the representation, but use your imagination here. So every interest you have, Linda, so say, I think you had put in the comments earlier, you love discovering new food. So say food is one circle. Being the president of Lakewood Chamber is another circle. <clears throat> Tourism in Lakewood and supporting local businesses is another circle. Well, I kind of said something about it earlier about the raving fans, but that overlap that you have of all three interests of yours is going to be your sweet spot with your raving fans. And the algorithm will recognize that more and more and more and reward you with those same type of people that have those type of characteristics. I know I'm kind of getting really nerdy with this, but I want you, um, I want you to understand um, sure, that, sure. That, that it's beneficial to the business. So anyway, so having a corporate mindset is great, but it's more you want people to understand who you are and, and have your authentic self come across and develop those multiple layers of marketing within. And that will naturally start attracting enough people that are interested to where you'll get that social proof and the algorithm will start then rewarding you with that organic, organic reach. So 
all the advice that I've researched and all the people that I've connected to, they say, get your first hundred videos out there before you make any adjustment to your marketing strategy or even think to judge yourself. Um, so a hundred and they, and the reason why is because it takes time to start getting that traction. Um, it truly takes time to start getting that traction. So the corporate businesses that may not be seeing success, they're probably not doing it consistent enough, or they're not, they're, they're either not doing it consistent enough or they're just not putting out quality enough content. Um, enough quality content um, is, is where I'm going with that as well. Because if every social media platform's algorithm is going to reward you for having great content. And if you have content that's kind of, you could tell it, it, it's half-assed, excuse my language there, but it, you, it, you can tell, you can feel that when somebody is putting one foot in in their marketing and, and when it's really not serious intent behind the marketing. So to answer your question, definitely I recommend doing it, make it your personal account do not run it as business, only run it as business if it makes sense at a certain point and then we can cross that bridge once it, it makes sense. But um, with the business account, you really don't get too many more perks. You get a little more analytical features. Um, and I, But more than anything, you actually get limited because with the business account, you're not able to use some of the viral music that everyone's kind of using to get their businesses to be noticed um, and go get that organic traffic. So, um, so yeah, so I encourage you to make a personal account. You can definitely advertise Lakewood Chamber on there, but it's more centered around what you want to bring to your audience and the value you want to bring to them. Um, as for risk, John, there's really no risk. Um, privacy and time and energy that goes into the creating the posts um, but outside of that, there's really no risk. Um, there's always, there's always a, um, a security risk when you're using any type of online anything. People can send you links, direct links, and if you click those, um, you can embed a virus onto your, your laptop or computer, et cetera. But, um, but outside of marketing-wise, there, there's no real big risk. So to dive into our tips, and then we'll come back to the Q&A. So the first tip I have is develop a baseline. And why this is important, so many people see successful TikTok pages, they get on there and they just get discouraged because, well, they have 100,000 followers or they have this many followers. Well, everybody starts at zero. So if you're taking notes, this, again, this is tip number one, but develop a baseline. And inside that, identify your handle. What's going to be your name on TikTok? How many followers did you start out with? How many views do you have in the beginning or at this current state? And John, I know you had already been out there. Um, you're, and you're welcome, um, for sure. But, um, but yeah, um, you have been out there as a, uh, Sue, but, <laughs> but, uh, but you've been on there enough. So because you've dabbled a little bit, you at least have a baseline that's not zero. So anybody else, it may be zero, but for John, it may be a little more, but still create that and establish that baseline. How many likes do you have? How many sales are you getting from TikTok per month? Because that's the matrix we really care about. Are we making the impact? Are we making sales? And are we having fun? It are the matrix we like to measure. And so how many leads are you actually getting from TikTok? Make that a matrix that you track because it might be zero at this point, but if you go consistent for a year, that's going to change. What's your current engagement rate? There's analytical tools within TikTok that you're able to dig in deeper and see where the data is coming from. Tip number two, your TikTok profile checklist. So this one's a powerful one here. <clears throat> Number one within that number two, or I guess I should say A within that second tip, congruency across all platforms. That is very key. When people, especially when it comes to SEO search engine, excuse me, search engine optimization, if you have the same name across every platform, it's a lot easier for people to find you, for your clients to find you, to research you, um, read your reviews and, and vet you essentially. Um, having a clear profile picture that's clear, smiling, professional, easy to recognize you. Craft an emoji that's, or excuse me, craft a bio that is packed with emojis, that is concise and explains exactly who you are, who you help, and what you do. And when you create that bio, you typically want to keep it under 150 characters. I believe TikTok actually limits you at 150 characters. Um, add a website link, another thing in your checklist that you need to have. And then connect your Instagram and YouTube. <clears throat> Tip number three identify top, excuse me, 10 subtopics within your 
category, niche, or business. And those topics can include deliverables, they can include services, they can include products, industries, results that you're able to get, benefits and features. Um, I, I know when I was looking at the people they were supposed to be attending today, there was someone that was an accountant. Um, if you're an accountant, you can use taxes, for example, or helping people identify what tax bracket they're gonna be in for the year. Um, that could be subcategories. Um, for Lakewood Chamber, networking, um, and I kind of listed off those different circles earlier that you can identify for lunch mobs, um, healthy living. Uh, another one for, and I apologize for the name, I don't recall, but I know you said something about trophy creations, um, Judy, I believe. Um, the design process, people would love, I would love to see what it go, what goes into creating those trophies and, and maybe even on the back end, someone receiving one of those trophies. That can be a, or a plaque that could be a, a TikTok or a short form video that you create. And it's something easy to create that doesn't really take much, much effort to do. Um, client reviews, all those differentiating factors that you're able to offer. Um, tip number four, develop a clear direction and plan or hire somebody that can do that. Um, so what I mean by that is so many people go in flying by the seat of their pants and expect to be successful. No success happens unintentional. It takes consistent work with intention with every single post and being able to be on TikTok and having a presence on TikTok. If you truly want to gain a following, you have to create a consistency and develop that plan that will hold you true to that consistency. <clears throat> number, tip number five, repurpose your content. And what I mean by repurpose, when you create a TikTok, and I was going to do one, but for, for lack of time, I was going to do one live and just show you how fast it is. Um, but for the sake of time, we got about four more minutes, so I won't do that. Um, but repurpose your content. And what I mean by that is, if you create a TikTok, you can literally download the TikTok to your phone with a click of a button. It will download the music and all the special features you put on. So if you do little bite clips and you put text in the top and you have all these nice words and then you got viral music in the background, you can literally hit one button. It will save it to your phone. From there, you can literally go straight to Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and upload that exact same video. And for those of you that actually are interested in this, there's a tool called SnapTik, S-N-A-P-T-I-K. It's an app that actually will take out that floating TikTok watermark that's in each post that you have. Um, powerful tool, very powerful tool. Um, number, tip number six, just start. Truly just start. And then tip number seven is be consistent once you do start. If you are gonna start, pick a frequency that is going to work with you because work for you that you're going to be able to maintain long term because consistency beats frequency every day. So if you're one of those people that want to just drop 10 posts and then ghost for a month, that's not going to work for your strategy. But those same 10 posts, if you did two a week for the whole month, that's going to get you more results than just dropping a whole bunch at once. Um, if you're looking for specific numbers, <clears throat> the, the numbers that I consistently see in all the Facebook groups and the people that I've networked with is three to five times, excuse me, three to five TikToks posted per week. That's for the beginner stage. If you can commit to that, that's almost one a day, a little bit less than one a day. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll, I'll preface this as well. Posting on the weekend does not have a large ROI. Um, so take the weekends off. It, there's so much content that's posted on the weekends. And because people are doing so much and out so much, they don't engage with as much content on the weekend either on TikTok. So the, the data actually shows that posting on the weekend doesn't really do your business good. So save those posts, take a brain break and wait till Monday and post that same post and you'll get more traction there on, on, that, on, on that day. So if you're going to be more advanced and you want to post more frequently, three to five times a day. Monday through Friday. That's if you're more advanced. And then if you're the elite level, there's people that literally post 10 times a day. And it's what's powerful about it is TikTok actually allows you, they have a, a snowball effect with their posts. So they don't, if you post 10 at once um, and you're consistently doing that, it actually releases them gradually over time, which is pretty cool 
a pretty cool feature that um, they have in there. So, um, so tip number eight, follow people and groups of people that have what you want, the success that you want. And don't, and a reminder here in this step as well is don't judge yourself compared to what they have and what they offer. Um, and I say that because you don't know who has a marketing team behind them that is doing everything for them or <clears throat> what budget that they may have. They could be millionaires with a budget and literally putting a hundred dollars to every single post to get that reach and that social proof. So you're sitting there measuring yourself up to them, not even realizing that they're literally boosting every single post to force that social, that social proof and, and, and make it look like it's organic when in reality they're boosting the algorithm to reward themselves on the back end to basically uh, looking to pick up on the back end because they got all that viral traction, which brings, more organic traffic, which means less tra which means less as they'll have to run in the future. Um, tip number nine, TikTok's AI is next level. Um, all the research that I'm finding on that, it literally is one of the most powerful AIs possible. Um, when you post a post, it actually scans your whole post. Um, there's people that actually are in the groups that say like their face, um, or excuse me, their face was too close to the camera and their post was actually held because <clears throat> there was too much skin detected in their post. Um, so, so, um, so TikTok's algorithm is literally next level. And what's pretty cool about it is because they want people to stay and be addicted to their platform. If you have, let's say a bookcase in the background, it's going to show your posts to people that typically engage with content that have books in them. So be intentional. This is what I mean when I say be intentional. Be intentional with your design of your content. Because if you are, if you have plaques in the background, Judy, I'm using you for example. If you have plaques and trophies in your background and they're stage perfect, it's going to start showing people that interact with sports or give rewards to their teams a little bit more. And it's going to help you with that organic traffic, get the attention that you're necessarily or essentially looking for. Um, tip number 10, again, don't judge yourself until you have posted your first 100 posts. Um, I can't say that enough. Um, so as I wrap this up, I know we're a little over time, about one minute over time. Um, I wanted to give you some resources. Um, so if you're taking notes, these are some Facebook groups that you can tap into that will give you some more information and get, keep you consistently learning. Um, Best of TikTok is a Facebook group. They have 234,000 members in that group. So if, if you're taking notes, definitely get that one down. TikTok for business, TikTok growth hacks for business owners and marketers is the rest of the title. They have 72,000 members in that group. They have really, really good content in there as well. Another group is Reels and TikToks um, that has 18,000 members in that group. I, I recommend, highly recommend getting in those groups. And if you're serious about growing your, your reach on TikTok, start there. You'll be able to get so many tips. Um, but before you get off here today, I challenge you to pick three of the tips that I gave today that you're going to implement right away. And I, I, I literally, I just, I can't say it enough. I just encourage you, please, to just take action because with the recession that's happening, um, with the way that the algorithm is working on Facebook and Instagram, TikTok is putting us in a position and in a bubble to where we can capitalize on this organic reach and help our businesses overall. So thank you all for having me. It's been an honor. My name is Paris Gray, um, and we'll open up for Q&A if we have time or if people are sticking around. I'll stick around for about 10 or 15 minutes if Linda's okay with it. And, um, and yeah, uh, thank you all for being here today. It was amazing. Does, uh, does anyone have a burning question? Oh, and, and real quickly, we, you know, we are recording this, so I will, I will be posting this um, um, in our next newsletter. So if you, you feel like blah, 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 there was a whole lot of content and I didn't get it all, It'll be available. Um, and uh, Paris, uh, you have a Facebook page, uh, a personal Facebook page, as well as Iceberg Ads. Uh, so go on to Facebook and um, uh, connect with him there. Uh, like his page, uh, be friends. And um, I'm sure that he would be happy to hear from you if you have any questions. But if you've got anything burning right now, um, feel free, raise your hand or just shout out um, your question. Shayla says, thank you, Paris. You're very welcome. Thank you for being here. I have a quick question. 
So for my job, I have, we have a digital content person. So that's, you know, kind of their primary role, but because I'm in um, sales and outreach, I do a few posts on LinkedIn. It's still, I'm still learning that myself. Um, so if I'm not really going to do a call to action per se, what's a great tip? You know, you know, sometimes there's formulas or whatever. I don't know what other way to describe it. What formula or tip would you say is a great way to create intrigue? Like what's what's kind of like a catch 22 to just get people to engage or respond without necessarily a call to action, like call today, you know, kind of a thing. <laughs> For sure. Um, so clickbait, I don't know if you're familiar with the term. Mm -hmm. um, so clickbait is, is a great way to get people to engage. Um, it just, just having something just cheesy where you're just, Hey, come in. It just that graphic alone it actually has data that backs it up that those graphics do work. So if, if you're looking for just something really quick, just that you'll be overwhelmed by the time you get done reading, but it will give you a starting point to what you can actually implement today. Great question, Tammy. And thank that, did that answer what you're, was that what you were looking for there? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And Tammy, you could do something goofy i mean you know there's the the whole painted rock thing um you know uh, you know and maybe it's well i don't know if you want to have rocks you know on the on public transportation for example but um maybe it's you know finding finding whatever weird you know mascot duva holly whatever it is um and it could be it could be something as simple as um uh, a scavenger hunt, um, you know, and take your selfie um, and post it, you know, uh, sharing that kind of thing, but whatever it is to create a buzz where, you know, it, it, that call for action would be more along the lines of help spread the word about Pierce Transit, whatever, whatever that might look like, um, you know, just, just to create that buzz and people can, people can have fun with that too. For sure. And you just, you got my wheel spinning in there when you were talking, Linda, Tammy, that rock idea could be genius. You never know what takes off. There's a there's a news reporter. I don't, I don't recall which network it is, but there's a news reporter. She actually. Oh. Paris, we're, we're, we're getting you in and out of here. So I, I'm not sure. Okay. The connect, uh, the connectivity can you, is. Can you hear me now? We can. It, is it uh, saying, can you hear me? Am I still good? Yes. Yeah, it just froze for a minute. Okay, good, good, good. Um, that's a voice, voice I haven't heard in a while. That was Scott, wasn't it? No, um, that was John. But, uh, that was John. Oh, that was John? Okay. <laughs> awesome. But um, but yeah, so like there is a, a news reporter. She walks around. There's a couple things she does. She does like a little Lego and she puts a little Lego action figure in all these different places and basically does commentary for it. And it just gets so much traffic. She walks around also with like this little tiny microphone that's literally about an inch big. And she just does like little funny little stories. So a rock on a bus and different seats on the bus, that could be funny. You know, it just, you never know. So it's just like just trying something and getting it out there and being mm -hmm. consistent. You could paint a face on the rock and have it sit in passenger seat with you paying fair you, you never know and it just that will bring awareness in itself because people are like well this is weird this is different and it, it's a hook and yeah. once you get that hook and you get them in, engaged um from there you typically the structure of a post you want to get the hook you want to provide some good value and then hit them with a the call to action it could be reach out to public transit or the next time you need such and such re, uh, look for public transit you it, it, there's endless amounts so it just however creative you want to be it you can do it. And TikTok is so awesome that it's truly allowing people to just be a hundred percent themselves, be authentic. And you're literally, it, the, the options are endless. So um, just start. I, I really can't say it enough. Like just, if you're, if you're going to take action or if you're going to encourage the marketing team to start, like just start planting some ideas and, and just start. Yeah. I'm excited to share the recording with our digital content person because she's probably more the go-to person, but it doesn't mean that I won't necessarily uh give it a roll too so uh, all righty <laughs> thank you Jenny, i have a feeling that jello shot somewhere in there would be would be yeah <laughs> yeah and nothing wrong with that either <laughs> i don't know that was just that was just a thought <laughs> <laughs>
that's where I think John says it could be a little dangerous, but okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't know, maybe Paris, we could we could do a follow up and, and actually walk through what um, uh, creating an account and, and creating some TikTok videos would look like. What do you fun. say? I'm, I'm, I'm game for it. Let me know. Yeah. Okay. What do you guys think? Thumbs up? Yeah. Would you do it? Would you try it? <laughs> okay. I see a couple of thumbs. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, I, maybe this is something we would like to follow up on fairly quickly, right? Uh, because yeah, you know, that's the one thing. I mean, I, I, I fell in love with the concept of Facebook um, once I actually accepted it. Um, and it did take me quite a while to accept it. Um, but uh, as, as soon as I really started catching on to the potential um, in marketing and, and, uh, and, and, and on some level advertising as well, uh, that's when Facebook decided uh, we've, we've got you guys now. And so we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and start charging you and charging you plenty um, and oh, by the way, our followers, uh, the people that liked our page, as well as our followers weren't seeing our posts. The algorithm was, was pretty hinky. Um, and so we invested a lot. We invested a lot of our, our uh, resources into, uh, into that one program. Um, and uh, it would be nice, uh, especially with TikTok, where we can actually have a wider reach, like you say, and post that on Facebook, post that on Instagram as well as on YouTube. And so it would be one vehicle or one, I, I shouldn't say just one vehicle, but um, basically making a post or a video and being able to share that across several platforms, which I really like uh, because, you know, with a staff of three, um, you know, we're all the marketing team, if you will, but um, there's absolutely no way that we can, we can, you know, churn this kind of stuff out. Um, uh, on top of doing our jobs and that's that's serving our members so um, yeah but I but I I do see this perfect storm this perfect opportunity right now and who knows uh, when TikTok uh, is going to pull the plug on uh, on the free ride if you will and uh, start start their you know their charging um, you know their audience as well and so I think it, now is the time to to seize the day if you will Right. Okay. Questions? I'm trying to answer a few that I see in here, but if I haven't answered your question, please, please feel free to speak up. Yeah, you know, Leanna asked a question earlier and yep. it was about another platform, and I can't remember what it was. Uh, about Snapchat. Snapchat. There you okay. Go. Let me, what was the question exactly? What's up with Snapchat? <laughs> I think that was the question. So it um, it actually is still being pretty successful. We don't market Snapchat yet. And um, I've actually, over the past three months, I've actually built a pretty good network of other digital marketers that are in the area. Um, basically, we're just trying to be together. We're trying to basically be a one-stop shop. So if someone comes to me and I only offer Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, I can then source them out to them for... Uh, LinkedIn per se, or Google or, or YouTube to be able to make sure everyone is getting a full service if, that, if that's the avenue you want to go. Um, but nobody in the area that I know is doing Snapchat. Um, and, and, and it's not because it's not successful, because I've seen people make it successful. But just for business, it takes a lot of work. It definitely takes a lot of work with the disappearing videos. Um, you're not able to keep that social proof and you, you have to be so consistent. Um, every single day producing and promoting or uh, publishing content. So it, um, it's definitely a workhorse, but it can work for anybody because um, there's definitely a, a, a large audience that, of people that go to TikTok consistently. So, or excuse me, not TikTok, Snapchat. So if you use Snapchat and you want to develop a strategy for it, uh, the same applies here. Just be consistent, um, do what you can do and maintain over time. And just continue to show up and you'll you'll eventually start developing leads and relationships with your followers and eventually get business from there. So great question. Great question. Good enough. Okay. Any more questions, comments? Okay. Oh, I'm looking forward to the follow-up on this. 
<laughs> yeah, we're, we're kind of hands on as far as learning is concerned. <laughs> Me as well. Super. Well, I want to thank you again. Um, boy, a lot of food for thought. And um, Paris, you did a wonderful job. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. We're going to invite you back real soon. So be prepared for part two, okay? Yes, ma'am. I, I already am. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Paris. Yeah, you know what you got to do next, right? And yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you all for, uh, I know that we went over time. Thank you all for, for sticking it out. And um, look forward to seeing you guys uh, for our next session with uh, Mr. Paris. Um, and if you, once again, if you have any questions, um, I know that uh, Paris would love to hear from you. Thanks. Look forward to chatting with you. John, I'm going to be giving you a call here very shortly, okay? I'll be waiting for it. Thank you, John. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Now that I've got you. Now evening. that I've got you. Thank you. And tell your rooster neighbor hello. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> did you hey, want so me to take care? Did you want me to just stay on the line here? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording though.